Hi, this is River Dodio, and today I'm going to give you two reasons why I prefer live cabinets versus inert speaker cabinets. And this is just my personal preference, preference and uh, I'm going to give you these two, and you can think about it whether it would apply to you or not, and that will be a strong indication whether a properly designed and built live cabinet will be to your liking or not. I'm not saying it's the best approach in the world, because there's no such thing. Everything is subjective. And uh, let's, let's begin. So basically, my number one reason for preferring live cabinets is subjectively, I found their sound much more real and natural than inert cabinets. And uh, what, and to understand that, uh, or to give you any indication whether this will be applicable to you or not, uh, I am, uh, you can think about my perception, how I hear music, as if I was a violinist. So if you are a violin player, then you will want to hear or you will perceive uh, music in a similar fashion as I do. I have had uh, exposure to live music, uh, live very high level singing in my family, uh, and, and, and music instruments including grand piano, violin, guitar, so I basically, that's how my hearing grew up, hearing these live instruments, these complex live instruments, hearing classical music, uh, going to uh, classical music performances, going to uh, baroque quartets, listening to church organ in, uh, on organs in cathedrals built many many centuries ago so it's not modern organs it's 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 baroque european organs and and that's how my hearing and that's how my calibration turned out i had uh, basically coaching from my grandfather who was an astonishing uh, singer and and he also played several uh, music instruments in a classical orchestra so he gave me the starter package on how to listen to music, what to listen for, and, and also advice on a stereo setup. So basically, that's my hearing reference. And, and I haven't even heard any audio file, audio gear until I was beyond 20. So before age of 10, I haven't even heard anything like that. And even after I heard audio file gear, it's not my reference. And studio recordings are not my reference either. And recordings in general are not my reference. My reference are uh, real life instruments uh, which have complex tone, complex character, such as the violin or piano. Uh, and uh, and, and this is how my hearing works. So when, when I reference how what I'm hearing from a stereo system, I refer it to these live experiences. And, uh, and my hearing is, is more or less intact. I can easily hear up to 90.6 kilohertz. I can hear bats very clearly. Uh, so I have a very acute perception, even in the very high registers, I have an very acute perception in the bass, so I, I don't want to hear like a, a big mid-bass hump, and that's, that's like a major turn off for me. If you try to replace quality bass with quantity, poor quantity bass, that, that's a big tell sign, tell -tell sign for a live musician, a live music, that that musician has a problem, his technique is not good, his playing is not good, because he's trying too hard to play loud, because he, he doesn't have a good intonation, he doesn't have a good control over the instrument. And uh, 
and that's what happens with live music, that's what happens with stereo gear as well. If, if the bass is just too loud, overbearing, that's an indication that it, it's trying to mask a lack, lack of quantity. Um, so basically what I am uh, referencing to the music is the sound of live instruments and live humans. And I had the uh, fortune to hear in a close proximity, like sitting next to me, a singer, which is my grandfather, singing at his uh, full volume uh, and, and experiencing that kind of sound and, and, and what kind of uh, energy and what kind of uh, information content, what kind of uh, soul uh, music can have when you have uh, uh, someone who is able to transmit it. And this happens with every instrument as well. Uh, it's not just the sound that comes from a violin. It's do you want to make it sound like a live instrument? Uh, to me, that's, that's nothing, that's just ground zero. Uh, like listening to music, that's, that's a, a good thing. But uh, I've listened to so much music that for me, just listening to music doesn't cut the mustard. It has to be music that has uh, something in it, where, where, where it's a performance that was not done at, at the ground level, where the person just played for, you know, for whatever, but uh, but when the music is able to transmit information to you and with uh, live players you can right away hear it when someone performs like that and 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 what I'm looking for in in uh, in the stereo is that for those musicians when they are recorded even from the recording you are able to get that quality that in real life they can transmit to you. And, uh, and I am getting this quality only with live loudspeaker cabinets. With inert, sometimes I get a smidgen of it, but it's, it's like, 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 a, uh, like just in the early stage of infancy, it's just an em embryonic quality to it because uh, inert cabinets present music in a very distanced out way. So it's like you are looking at the music, but it's, it's, uh, it's not part of you. You are looking at a show. With inert cabinets, you are part of the performance because the most critical part of a performance when a musician is communicating to you uh, it's it's not just they are not playing music by themselves in in a in a vacuum. Music always happens as a as a dialogue between the musician and the audience. So the audience is just as much part of a performance as the performer itself. And uh, and 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 that's uh, when when you have that interaction between the performer and the audience. That's when miracles happen. And, and when you have a live loudspeaker cabinet, then you still get that connection as if the performance is, you are taken back to that moment when the performance happened and you become part of the dialogue that's, that was going on between musician and audience. This is a very, very magical feeling and, uh, and I'm getting it from the live cabinets that I built and uh, so that's my number one reason and nothing else really matters to me and now I'm going to give you another reason uh, it just for curiosity's sake is uh, sensitivity or efficiency is the same thing sensitivity is basically the uh, logarithmic rating in uh, db and efficiency is the linear rating in in uh, power translation basically same thing uh, expressed in different units uh, so basically when you have an active cabinet then the sensitivity of your loudspeaker increases uh, you get higher sensitivity over a certain bandwidth and, and you can use this property of the loudspeaker, I mean of the loudspeaker cabinet, 
to increase the, the, the sensitivity, increase the efficiency. So basically from one watt of input, you are getting uh, a, a wider range, uh, a bigger volume. And when you get bigger volume, you also get a bigger range of from soft to loud sounds from the same amount of information unpackaged. And you can say, it doesn't matter because I just crank up the volume in my amplifier for a lower efficiency loudspeaker and it will play at the same volume. You are right, perfectly. But if you need 10 times more power or 100 times more power, then because you need 10 times more amplification or 100 times more amplification, you are entering 10 times or 100 times greater problems to the signal because when we are amplifying the signal we are also distorting it we are disrupting its linearity and uh, disrupting uh, adding colorations from our amplifier and yes we can use uh, negative feedback to correct those errors but negative feedback is not uh, smart it doesn't have brains it's going to erase things like mush it together and grind it together and you are going to uh, be left with more or less technically correct signal at the mic at the macro scale but at the micro scale you are going to have uh, deficiencies you are going to have lowest level details erased and you are going to have uh, phase issues uh, and while we can say that uh, we cannot really hear phase so if you say like Let's say you play like a one kilohertz note and, and then you put it five uh, degrees out of phase or not, correct phase, you can't hear that. No, not at all. Uh, some people, if you have trained your brain and you are listening to test tones day and night for a few months, yes, you will be able to hear that. But you, first you need to train your brains to recognize it. And once you have trained it, you can recognize it. Anyone can recognize it. But you need, some people need like a few weeks training, others years. And others, you, you won't be able to hear it because uh, your hearing maybe doesn't work in that frequency. But what everyone hears is that uh, when we have music, complex pattern playing, then uh, it has many different frequencies are playing at the same time. And when, and the brain for all of us is extremely keen that if two frequencies are just a few degrees out of phase to each other, your brain automatically picks it up as the sound state changing. So that's how we uh, calculate, the brain calculates the 3D imaging of uh, what we hear based on the fine uh, differences between the phasing of the different notes. And, and when we employ error correction, then we are employing adding uh, phasing problems to the extremes of the frequency. Of course, at, at the low end of the range, uh, the brain doesn't have enough hearing acuity to calculate a few uh, degree differences in, in bass notes. We are not equipped for that or, or, or hearing is not even precise enough to actually register such differences. But at the high range, like a few kilohertz and above, ping, red lights going out, in a flashing red light, beep, 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 something is going on. And so basically, these are the two things why I myself uh, really uh, love properly built a live loudspeaker cabinet because it, uh, it can give me that layer of music that 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 i only can get uh, from very high level performances like when you get the heart of it and the meat of it and and that's not something that a, a system can generate for you it's something that the musician does for you and if the musician did it then you have a chance to hear it it won't turn all of your recordings to, to an ultra special recording, but it will give you the chance to find the gems. Um, that's one. And the other is sensitivity. If you have greater sensitivity, you, you don't have to push your stereo to 
produce more power so you can create uh, more distortions in the sound. So basically the least amount of power you need to reproduce music, you are getting a purer, undistorted uh, form of it. So basically uh, when uh, people who love high current speakers, high power amplifiers, they uh, like to point fingers at people with the low power single and with triodes with high efficiency speakers oh you guys must be lovers of distortion because uh, those uh, single and triodes they have a higher distortion figures oh, you guys are really fucked up you you listen to really colored stuff but uh, guys if you need to crank up the volume then you are introducing uh, such distortions that are not present in the harmonic spectrum it's not in the thd scale those are non-harmonic uh, distortions non-harmonic uh, omissions from the signal which are for the brain way worse than harmonic distortion because the harmonic distortion is in correlation with the music signal that's something that occurs normally so when you have a, a second order or third order harmonic distortion that that always happens in real life all, all everything that generates sound also adds second order and third order to it if you have a little bit more of those components that just uh, uh, adds uh, like overemphasizes a, a little bit certain aspects of the sound but it's not like adding a different instrument to the sound. So it's just like adding a different highlight to each of the voices, each of the sounds coming. And the other, this is the choice that you have when you have like a single-handed triode and high efficiency system. And when you have a, a, a high power, low efficiency inert cabinet system, then uh, you are not adding uh, this type of highlight so so this is what uh, those who choose these systems consider that okay I don't want any extra attention on either of these voices or instruments however what you don't notice is that yes sure you are avoiding the extra attention but you are erasing uh, the underlying fine layer it's gone so we have two choices. We either have the extra highlight and you also have the really fine layer that will allow you to get connection to this, uh, I could say like magical layer or, or food for the soul layer of information that's contained in the recordings coming from the performer if it's there. Or... Uh, the other choice is that you have like a, a very lean sound, just sounding more like a studio recording and uh, you don't have the fine details. So that's, that's my message that uh, I hope this will help for all of you to decide which is uh, the road, which is more curious for you. I would recommend for everyone to familiarize with both because uh, this is how I perceive music and sound. Your hearing and your subjective experiences might work different from how mine work. And uh, it's for you to explore. I'm just here to give you uh, my experiences and then uh, you can take them and maybe they are helpful to develop your own experiences. So thank you guys for tuning in like, subscribe. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.